Hey, it's Ryan Gordon. I just wanted to show you my sweet, sweet Cyber City apartment uh, inside the so-called metaverse. This is my home screen on my Oculus Quest headset, and this is not what I actually came to show you. I wanted to talk to you today about some things we're doing with Dragon Ruby. So, you may not know this about the Oculus Quest, but it's just an Android device. So naturally, it will play the Android version of our games, such as everyone's favorite demo, Flappy Dragon. Now I gotta tell you, I'm, this thing is literally strapped on my face, so if uh, this is really shaky, I apologize. But that's, uh, you know, the same game we always show you on these things, but it thinks it's running on a phone, but it's just another Android device. It doesn't know the difference. But we thought, why not go a little further than that? So we add what are called VR modes to uh, Dragon Ruby and ported it to the Oculus Quest. So here's a native Oculus Quest app in what we call VR Mode 1. Oh, there you are. I was facing the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so VR Mode 1 is just a big movie screen uh, playing your game. The Oculus controller feels like a joystick as far as it knows, so you can flap it. All you need to know about this is you can walk up to the screen, you can look at the screen... It's running in three. It's running in VR the way you'd expect it to. Okay, so let's let's see here. So that's VR mode one. It's just Oculus would never approve that app for sale because it's just the game running on a flat screen. They want more than that. So VR mode two is the exact same thing, but it adds the ability to add depth to sprites. It, you can pop them out from that little screen. See, there's our dragon sitting up there. Now, when they're popped out from the screen the, uh, uh, with depth, they can also go above and below it. So watch the dragon and watch the columns that are about to go. There go. There's the columns. See how they're going way past the screen? There you go. And this dragon's going to fall all the way down. Goodbye, dragon. And that one, too. Poor guy. Anyway. <laughs> so, on top of that, we wanted to add... VR Mode 3, which takes away the clipping screen entirely. So now you can see there's still our intro screen, but you can see our mountains are going all the way to the, uh, the horizon, the dragon's a little closer to us, the text is closer to us, and check out these columns. They're coming out from the, uh, the screen. They have depth, and they're solid. They're actual blocks, and of course, since we're in 3D, our dragon's flipping a different way, too. VR Mode 2 was just adding a couple of numbers to the thing. We just put took the dragon sprite and the column sprite and said there's a Z-coordinate of you know 10, something that pushes it out from the screen a little bit. Um, VR Mode 3, we had to do some more work, obviously, because we had these columns rotating around and stuff like that, but it was still built from the original code base. We just had to add that stuff in there. So you're, if you want to take a game and move it from a 2D game to a VR game, you are not starting from scratch on your initial on your original game if you want to do that. But I don't think that our market here is going to be people moving games from 2D to 3D, even though it's possible to do. What our, I think our market here is, is the people that are afraid of 3D. Let me show you what Oculus gives out to developers as an example of, like the Hello World example. Like what you should... This is called Cube World. This is written by Facebook or Oculus, whatever you want to say. And it's just tons and tons of cubes floating around you. It's uh, surprisingly soothing. You could just stand here for a while and watch this. It's cute. But what you need to know about this thing is this is thousands of lines of C code to do this. Uh, if you wanted to write this, you would have to know OpenGL. You would have to know all sorts of things about VR. You would have to understand uh, all sorts of matrix math. It's complicated, it's scary, and I think that most 2D developers would look at that and run the opposite direction. So we wanted to go in a different way with this. So we built, oops, where'd you go? This thing called Let There Be Light. We wanted to show you what you could do with 100 Ruby code in Dragon Ruby VR. So Let There Be Light, I'm going to just pull down the analog stick here, and boom, it's the Big Bang. It's going off all around you. You can look around at it, and you can push the stick the other way, and you can have a reverse Big Bang. Here it comes. There you go. 
can bring it out and forward, whatever. But this was 100 lines of code. This is not the most earth-shaking thing ever, although it's actually a lot of fun to play with, believe it or not. Um, all this is is 2D sprites, X and Y like you would normally have, and a Z coordinate that pushes them towards us. We'll do it a little slower so you can see. There you go. I think this is going to be a much better path for people that want to get into VR but feel like they don't have the skill to do it. Um, there's no complicated matrix math. There's no complicated perspectives or projection matrices and such like that. All you have to do is know X and Y like you normally do. And instead of, say, having Mario jump by changing the Y coordinate, you got things come towards you by changing the Z coordinate or lots of things in the case of the star field. Um, Super easy to do. 100 lines of Ruby code did this whole app from start to finish. Uh, we're really happy with this. This is going to be great for prototyping. It's going to be great for making fun little throwaway games, but also for, you know, maybe having a good start to build something more serious than that. Um, I think you're going to like it. We have a lot of work to do on this still, but this is coming very soon. Um, and we'll have more to say about then. So thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you soon.